evening, friends. It is Sunday, June 12th, 2016. Welcome to this very special live broadcast edition of the Gatheist Manifesto. Well, I think I think by now everyone is aware of the reason that we're here. Um, in the early hours of this morning, 50 people were killed at a gay nightclub in Orlando, and 53 more were injured. Um, we don't know everything about why it happened. Uh, there's been suggestions that it's, uh, you know, inspired by Islamic terrorism. Uh, the, the shooter's father said that he'd been angered by seeing two men kiss in Miami. But, uh, the why, the why does matter, but the why matters less than the fact that there are 50 people who didn't wake up this morning after going to a club to, to have a good time and to hang out with their friends. And, uh, and we're all, we're all hurting. Um, I woke up this morning and I reached over to grab my phone. Like I always do just to see what was going on. And I saw a notification from NPR saying that there was a mass shooting in a nightclub. And as, as horrible as this is, a lot of times when when you get news like that, you think, oh, great, another mass shooting that no one's going to pay attention to. I set my phone back down and I rolled over, went back to sleep for a little bit, and then woke up and read the story and found that it was a gay nightclub. And then in my head, I was thinking, God, don't let this be a hate crime because it, it already happened. So I was really, really hoping that it wasn't a hate crime because you know, at least we could say that because it being a hate crime hurts a lot more. And then we found out that it probably was. I'm joined by my co-host Ari Stillman. Hey Ari. Hello there. So, um, how you doing? I am. I never really know what to say when stuff like this happens because it's just like, I don't know, especially in the last few years with, you know, all the news of mass shootings just happening over and over and over. It's just like, I'm just becoming so numb to it. And I just, I just don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm just one person who doesn't have any power over, you know, what these, you know, angry and violent people are doing. And I'm just like, what, what do I do? I don't know. I don't know where to start. Yeah. It, it's so hard because, you know, as activists, obviously, you know, we, we spend so much time having these conversations and trying to do something about it. And when something, when stuff like this happens, I mean, it's, <laughs> and you feel so bad because I don't want to make this about me, right? It's not about me. It's about the people who got hurt and the people who got yeah. killed. But sometimes it makes it like, God, what am I doing? Like, none of this matters. Like I do all of this stuff and all of these bad things still happen. So like, why, you know, why do it? Um, it's a really, it's a really tough thing to deal with. Um, so I also want to mention for anyone who's listening, uh, we, we do have, we do have phone lines open. Uh, if you want to call in, if you've got something to say, uh, you know, if you're hurting, if you're an ally and you want to speak out in support and solidarity, uh, we definitely want to hear from you. The number is 513-878-0-GAY. That's 513-878-0429. Uh, and we'll, uh, hopefully have people calling in throughout the show, uh, to, to speak about what's on their mind. So, and we also have the chat open on Spreaker if you yes. don't want to call in and I'm I'm looking at the the chat feed right now, so if you would rather say something through text to have us read on the show, I'd be glad to do that for you. Yes, absolutely. The chat at spreaker.com uh do uh well, <laughs> you probably know where it's at if you're listening live. Um so I I want to start out by uh, I I'd, I'd reached out to a couple of friends to see how they were doing and uh, some folks actually put together kind of an informal gathering of people just to just to talk about it, just to to react and sort of commiserate and and feel you know together as a community. And uh, a couple of those folks agreed to talk to me uh, via a recording about how they're feeling. So I'm going to go ahead and play those now. Um, when I first read the news, I actually didn't see that it was a gay club like initially um i don't know what article i read it was like an international news and it just said like in orlando and i was like oh that's horrible and then i cl clicked on the cnn article later um as i like started looking for information and uh 
That's when I saw it was a gay club, and I just started crying. And my partner was asleep in bed next to me, so I had to cry, like, super quiet. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty devastating. And then my first thought, though, really was like, oh, I really hope that it was not a person of color that committed these this horrible crime because then they're going to overshadow the fact that this is a hate crime it's an act of violence against a community and uh, they're going to focus on the fact that he may or may not be Muslim or whatever and uh, I really think that's the point that a lot of people are missing is that it's an act of violence against the queer community and also potentially against people of color because it was pretty thoroughly planned out and it was like a Latin dance explosion night or whatever at the club. So it's just like really horrible. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it's something I fear about going I feared it going to pride in San Francisco a few years ago even though there wasn't even like a reason to fear it it's just big group opportune moment for like violence I guess so my go-to response for what to do is always educate <laughs> educate people because that's really where all of this like hatred comes from is like ignorance or like misguided beliefs like I'm sure people really think they're doing the right thing. Um, and yeah, I think uh, educating people and then um, not electing Donald Trump as president because the current political climate is sort of like, I mean, it's directly encouraging this type of violence. And so, I mean, it's not like I have any control over that, but really like not electing someone who encourages violence against oppressed and marginalized communities like that would be a good start <laughs> um pretty awful i i think that the one of the hardest parts for for me waking up this morning was actually the fact that yesterday my friends and i had a big party to paint posters for Cincinnati Pride. Um, we're marching in the Pride Festival and needed posters, so the night was filled with just absolute queer heaven. We made posters that were affirming and wonderful and were in affirming and a wonderful company and going, going to bed around 1 a.m., um, after a night of absolute queer heaven and waking up in queer hell to news just knowing that only an hour later than we went home, our brothers and sisters and siblings in Florida were literally running for their lives. Um, and that the Facebook post on Pulse's Facebook was really really devastating like keep running that is reading that was um it really puts you in the moment and I think as a queer person like we've all been we all are used to watching our backs so often like even coming home last night really late um we saw drunk college students in the street yelling at each other like did you get the booze oh my god you're so gay like that kind of thing and um watching our backs when we walked in making sure that we were safe and knowing that those people probably didn't think to do that because they were in a queer safe space what they thought was a safe space and how many times have we done the same thing let our guard down among our own and it was just it was really a stark contrast to how we ended our night and how we woke up in the morning um definite tears waking up um and i, I it was really uh seeing the facebook posts roll in from our own community and also from 
allied communities, which is, it, it was a wonderful moment to feel connected um, and to feel like we're coming together, but it was really awful, even to see the small microaggressions, like friends posting from Fox News. I saw a clip that said specifically Orlando nightclub shooting um, gunmen, like basically they found out that he was of, it said, specifically said of Afghan origin. And I just, I commented on, on that person's post specifically saying, um, leave it to Fox news to push their own agenda instead of actually reporting the fact that this was a hate crime. Um, it's, it's devastating to see those microaggressions and to see it uh, completely mowed over by right-wing agenda. It was really, really difficult seeing those posts. Um, but I kind of used it to my advantage when my parents kind of texted me this morning. Um, not at all about this, but I mentioned... You know, have you seen the news? And, um, or I, my dad texted me, what are you doing today? And I said, morning. Um, and just, I used that as an opportunity to say, look at this tragedy. Please don't vote for Trump. <laughs> um, and it's, that's pretty selfish of me, but it's, it's hard to, even for my parents, people that are supposed to be so close to me, it's hard to explain the intensity of this situation and the the intensity of daily life as a queer person and having to watch your back and wondering. I mean, they know what that feels like, wondering, like, after all of the movie theater shootings, like, they thought twice about going to a movie the next time. Um but it's hard to think twice about just stepping out of your door every day. And so I hope that they take this as an opportunity to change their thinking. And that's just the best we can hope, really. Um, I know we were talking about, amongst my friends, the few glimmers of hope we've seen. People in droves donating blood. Um, people using this as a, as a platform to to talk about the fear-mongering of the media. and that's There are a few glimmers of hope, and we just keep hoping for, for more. So that's reaction from a few members of our community here in Cincinnati, just some, some friends of mine who uh, you know, felt like they had something to say and that they wanted to react. Um, the stuff they said kind of, kind of mirrors where I'm at. Um, you know, it's, there's so much anger and so much rage and so much sadness and so much just when, when is it going to stop? When, when are people going to start caring enough to actually do something? Because, um, you know, you almost feel bad making these things into political arguments, but you know, the, the political side of things is what helps enable, uh, and what could possibly prevent things like this from happening. So I don't really think that you can completely separate the two. Ari, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Um, William Ferguson, who's in the chat room, hi, um, posted something earlier today on Facebook um, when the news was first, you know, s circulating, um, saying, you know, if if nothing got done after Sandy Hook, I don't imagine that anything is going to get done after this. And that definitely, unfortunately, is something that I agree with, because, you know, if if, you know, children at school get gunned down and Congress doesn't do anything, you know, how are they going to care enough about, you know, a bunch of queer people at a nightclub to do anything about, you know, our, the, the violence and gun issue that we're having in this country? Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. And I, I feel kind of like an asshole for saying this, but it's going to be real interesting to see who uh, all of a sudden decides they're allies now. Um, <laughs> yeah. All, all of the people who engage in queer antagonism and trans antagonism and, and all of the, the dog whistling surrounding sexuality and gender issues. Um, you know, I, I feel comfortable saying that the, you know, the blood of these people rests partially on your hands. Uh, so, you know, if, if you weren't, if you weren't an ally yesterday, please don't try to pretend to be today. 
um, if you didn't care about my life or Ari's life or our lives yesterday, just, just keep your mouth shut because we don't need you. Um, so yeah. Um, so the, the number to call in is five, one, three, eight, seven, eight, zero gay. That's uh zero four two nine. Um, yeah. And, uh, and we do have our first caller on the line caller. You are live. Who are we talking to? Greetings. This is Alex Moreski from down in Savannah, Georgia. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. How are you, buddy? I'm doing fine. How are you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're here. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you, what do you yeah. got to say, Alex? What's going on? How are you? Well, you know, for those of you that don't know who I am, I am um, a, a Episcopal clergy person. I've uh, um, sort of bonded a lot with various communities over the last couple of years, um, including the, the No Religion Required community, which is sort of where I know some people from, I uh, think Atheist Manifesto from. Um, and and I, one of the things that I do is try to build relationships, try to uh, build a sense of community and do a lot of listening. And there's, I've come to discover that there's a lot of pain and hurt in this world. Um, there's a lot of people out there that think that because they have a particular privilege or a particular set of beliefs that they can subjugate others, that they can persecute people that are not like them or don't think like them. And I'm one of the people out there that thinks that that's a huge problem. Um, and I think that part of the problem with any of that mentality, even if those people don't do anything about it necessarily, is that it leads to a, a society where it is so easy to pick up a gun and go into a nightclub and kill other human beings simply because of who they are. And that saddens me deeply. And all I want to say is that I'm here for whatever it's worth as a clergy person, as a human being. Uh, as an ally, a straight ally, um, I am here. I will continue to be here. I will continue to walk arm in arms with my friends and family and loved ones in the LGBTQ community and support and love in any way that I can. We appreciate that, Alex. You're uh, you're You're one of the family, and I hope you know that. You don't have to be. (laughs) You don't have to be. uh, Yeah, you don't have to be atheist to be part of the family. You just have to be a good person. (laughs) And uh, by all accounts, you are one of those, and we appreciate you. Well, the point is that we are all in this boat together, Um, and every time that that someone is eliminated from this conversation, um, one way or another, it hurts all of us. Um, anytime life is lost, some part of ourselves is lost. And that is a fight that, with my dying breath, I am going to continue fighting. And it's always an honor, as someone that's coming from a place of privilege, to be present in that fight and to be embraced as family. I take that seriously, and I am honored um, that that is the case. Awesome. So well, thank uh, you. Thank you for all that you guys do hey, in this fight. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Mm-hmm. Take you care. You guys take care. Bye now. Alex is a good guy. He really is. I really like Alex a lot. So again, that number is 513-878-0429. Uh, we want to hear from as many people as possible, so please don't hesitate to call in. The time is now. So... Gosh, where do we even go now? (laughs) It's, uh, I was trying so hard to think about, you know, what, what to say, because I I feel like, you know, with, with what we do and the work that we're trying to do with the show, this is something that we have to react to, 
you know uh and i <laughs> obviously you know we, right now is about the time that we normally record the show and we had an entirely separate separate show planned and uh and this, I mean, this, we couldn't let this go without comments. So we just kind of barreled headlong with a very, very loose plan. Um, I will tell you one thing that just absolutely devastated me was seeing the Facebook post that Pulse Nightclub posted. Uh, very simply, it said, everyone get out of Pulse and keep running. And I can only imagine the the terror in the person's hands and and in their mind when they were writing that because it it's got to be it's got to be surreal to be in that situation and uh and I just I can't I can't imagine um we have another caller on the line caller you are live who are we talking to Hi Kelly it's Melissa Hey Melissa how are you dear <laughs> Uh, it's rotten and shaken up, but, you know, it's yeah. kind of how it goes today. Yeah, so tell me what's on your mind. Um, I was just kind of reflecting on this with my partner, because, you know, when, when I heard about the first shooting, it was devastating, to say the least, but then the second one didn't happen, but it could have. I'm like, oh, this is just going to be the new normal. And I was thinking, you know, maybe I should get armed, and, and part of me just went, you know what, I've never, ever thought of detransitioning. If this is this this is a choice, like some people keep telling me it is, it's it's not a choice at all. I think anyone would make, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Celeste and I were talking, and there was uh, someone on her Facebook page who was uh, who was someone who was newly sort of started to come out, and they were questioning whether or not they could transition in light of this because of this violence, and uh, it, it has such broad ranging implications. Um, and, and when you say, Melissa, you, when you say the second one that didn't happen, um, that, that's something that I, that I don't think we've brought up yet. Um, it came out in the news a couple hours after this that police in Los Angeles had stopped someone that had basically a car full of guns and explosives on their way to L.A. Pride. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. Go ahead. And all I could think is, oh, this is just going to be... Another Sandy Hook. This is just going to start being normal, and it'll stop being the news after a while. Cause it's going to be how America is. Yep. Mm. Well, Melissa, thanks for calling in. We love you. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of of posts um, of people, even people that aren't necessarily like trans people who are just now starting to be open about who they are. Like even just, you know, queer people, bisexual people, like anyone in the LGBT community, even if they've been, you know, part of the community for a while, that are just like, I'm like, for the first time in a long time, I'm scared to be open because, you know, the, uh, supposedly the whole reason why this whole incident started is because the shooter saw two men kissing and was, I, I don't know, offended or grossed out or something by it. And, that's you know we don't really know for sure because he's dead now but um according to what his father said that that was the impetus for for planning this whole this whole deal so i mean like like you always say Callie sometimes vis- visibility has a price and i don't i don't know what to tell people because we of course we need to be more visible because the more visible we are you know the the less stigmatized we're going to become and the less these kind of things are happening but you know in the in the immediate future um, you know, it's it's dangerous for people. I, I just don't know where to where to draw the line between encouraging people to be open and encouraging people to keep themselves safe. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I've I've thought that many times. Um, we uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, you're live. Who are we talking to? Uh, hey, it's Eli. Eli, how are you, Eli, buddy? Yay. I'm good. I'm good. Tell I'm us some calling. jokes. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm here to I'm here to be inappropriate in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and ruin this for people. Um, yes. No, I was going. I mean, I left a I left a comment on the thread, but you know, it's interesting. It's the gaytiest manifesto. So I think one of the things that we need to take on as not just you know queer allies or queer people, um, but also queer people who may be secular or humanist or whatever, is that a lot of this is on us. And Cali, you put it perfectly, which is a huge percentage of this blood is on our hands. You know, we can't one day decide that 
PC is silly and PC is going too far and Trump is only going to get elected because PC has gone so far. And then the next day, claim to stand with allies because drawing that line is just fucking, it's bullshit. And I'm not well spoken right now because I'm upset, but <laughs> no, it, I hear you. <laughs> that's what's on us. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, the thing is, and I don't, I don't mean to be, you know, angry and turn people away. If people have thus far been uh, maybe complacent or stood on the sidelines, you know, I don't know what I can do because I'm not queer, I'm not trans, uh, and you've decided to get involved, you know, as you know, after in light of this incident, please, we need you. Uh, please enter the movement. Please stand up and speak out for us. Uh, but I, th I think we're speaking generally more of the. You know the politicians who who dog whistle on sexuality and gender all the time, dehumanizing us, talking about how evil we are, and now turning around and saying that this is a horrible tragedy. No, you take partial responsibility for this. Is what is the statement that you need to make? Yeah, we've we've got all the all the Christian politicians who are you know using this similar kind of rhetoric, and then you know when a Muslim guy does it, oh now it's a bad thing. Right, you can't run on a platform of bathroom bills. And then turn around and be surprised when someone means what they fucking say. Yes. You know, and that's what, that's really what this is. And, and what's crazy about it is like, we can put them in a box, right? We can put the Christians and assholes in a box and be like, those guys are dicks. But we're supposed to be the good guys. And until yesterday, we fucking weren't. You know, all those giant YouTubers with millions of subscribers and thousands and thousands of dollars in Patreon, they're not going to say a fucking word. They're going to twiddle their thumbs, and they're going to wait until their next chance to make fun of a crying college student, and then all of a sudden they're going to wake up, and it's going to be the same fucking story, and they're going to forget that the day before yesterday people died because we are the group that supports the evil majority. It's the silence of us that makes it easy for people to do things like this. It's the silence of the secular majority. And, you know, I'm not fucking David Silverman, but, like, we're all fucking atheists. Everyone knows we're all fucking atheists, and it's our group that stands by and lives and let lives, or, well, oh, I agree with this, but not so much with that, that allows these kind of things to happen and gives these people the power that they have. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, and this goes to a point that um, Eli was making earlier in the week, uh, which was that, you know, the, the most powerful thing you can do on any social is issue is to say you're an atheist. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not 100% sure that I would go that far and say it's the most powerful thing, but it is absolutely powerful because it challenges the idea that religious equals moral and that, you know, irreligious equals amoral. Um, and I think that's important to do. Uh, and that's why I think it's so important for us as queer and trans people and allies to step up and, and speak up and claim our place in these spaces and say, no, like... I'm a queer ally because I'm an atheist, because I'm a secular humanist. I am a trans ally because I'm an atheist, because I'm a secular humanist, because I'm able to look at the evidence. I'm able to exercise compassion and look at the world around me and make a decision because I have a brain to use that these are problems and that these people are suffering and being hurt and we need to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. All right, I am going to send Kelly even more pictures of my genitals because she just keeps changing phone numbers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, I thought I was your new love interest. <laughs> Ooh, drama. Jealousy. Again, it keeps, I keep saying in them very clearly, I'm mad at Kelly for not doing the Black Widow takedown on Ray Comfort, and mm -hmm. I'm mad at you for not getting my very obvious, inappropriate hints. I'm trying to get on that harassment policy. <laughs> yeah, we're all just terrible people is what it comes down to. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go throw weights against Amen. the wall. Amen. <laughs> Eli, <laughs> thanks for calling in, buddy. We love... Oh, I accidentally muted him. him. <laughs> Eli, thanks for calling in, buddy. We love you. Bye. So, um... <laughs> yeah, going back to... Uh, going back to what we were talking about earlier about, you know being you know being scared of being open i mean this is something that i think about all of the time and it's something that uh that kind of weighs on me you know uh, i you know for the longest time i was single and i didn't really have to think much about it but you know now that i have celeste and we you know we go out places together all the time i'm always 
thinking twice. You know, I've never not held her hand or not kissed her or not hugged her uh, when I felt like doing it because I was afraid in public. But that doesn't mean that it's something that's not on my mind. You know, it's um, it, it's something that I'm always thinking about. And I mean, even today, you know, we went grocery shopping and in my head, I'm thinking, um, you know, I'm thinking, you know, we're getting all these looks from old people, which we usually do. Um, but you know, in my head now I'm, now I'm really thinking, you know, because before in my head, what I'm thinking is, oh, you know, they're thinking that we're gross or that we're weird or whatever. But now I'm thinking like, are these people looking at us and saying, yeah, you got what's coming to you or yeah, you deserved it. Or yeah, I wish that I could do to you what someone did to you in Orlando last night. And, you know, that may be, that may be completely irrational. You know what I mean? It, it, that may be a hundred percent wrong, but it's something that's, it's something that's really, that's really weighed on me. All right. We've got, uh, we've got the atheist Avengers and the promoting secular feminism folks on Skype here. Hey, uh, Hey folks, how you doing? Hey, hello. Hey. Thanks for calling in guys. How you feeling? What, what, what's on your mind? We're just broken hearted and we just wanted to offer our voices of support and allyship and grieve publicly with everyone. We appreciate that. Not me. Ugh. Hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and Ari. Ari. Yes. I, and then there's sweet me. Ari. Sweet, sweet Ari. That's sweet, right. Sweet, sweet Ari. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so, I mean, what are you, what are your guys' thoughts here? What's, what's going through your head as well, you're, you know, as you're reading about all this going on? We're absolutely appalled. But the thing that I always think about and that we were discussing um, amongst ourselves here in the studio was that whenever there's a horrible event, um, as humanists, we see so much more from, you know, all of the people that surround the event and all of the people involved and the way people pull together. And that's sort of the way in which um, we have some sort of... um, not positive feeling, but just sort of faith in humanity. Yeah. You know, yeah, not to use faith on an atheist show. You use it for anything. Yeah. So faith in humanity, you know. Yeah, especially, uh, you know, quickly seeing, uh, when I was when I was finding out about this uh, this morning, I was quickly seeing links to what we can do to help. And that's that's always what I'm looking for in a tragedy is to find out how we can help. What what is something that we can do to help alleviate the the horrible stress that is being put on the the loved ones of the people who had died, but also those who were injured and are still fighting for their lives. And uh, you know the blood donation uh, uh, search that was going through Facebook was really helpful in that. Uh, and also reminding people that, you know, some people are just not able to donate blood in Florida so that uh, anybody who is able should do so. And we- yeah, speaking speaking of, um, I, I'm not sure that a lot of people realize this, but uh, gay people who are sexually active are not allowed to donate blood. Yeah. yeah. Um, Still. You, you have to have been abstinent for at least a year. Uh, to be able to donate blood as a gay person, and for the purposes of of blood donation rules, I am a gay man. Um, wow! So <laughs> yeah, heterosexual a- people, even ones who are not monogamous, <laughs> can donate blood at any time. Yep. Yeah. So, so that's uh, and and there were there were some things going around Facebook saying that they had temporarily suspended those rules, but that uh, is not in fact true. Um, so basically, you know, we have an entire community of people who wants to come together to help and do something and is prevented by federal law from doing so. So that's, um, (laughs) yeah, that's a, that's a pretty poignant thing to bring up. Yeah. And, uh, I, I was also seeing that, um, a lot of people were saying if you're not able to donate blood, that there's, there's a fund for the, the victims, families, that has been going around also. I think it's on GoFundMe. Yeah, I saw and, that. I'm going to make sure that there's a link to that in the show notes here. And there was also a call for uh, needing... <laughs> there was a call for snacks uh, by the blood donation uh, 
uh, center that was asking for, you know, cookies and candies and juices and that kind of thing that people have after blood donations so that they don't pass out. So if you can't donate, those are some things that you can do to help, which I, I really appreciated because, I mean, that's that's always what I'm looking for is just some way to help. Yeah, we all want to feel productive and you know it's it's senseless and it's meaningless and i think it's just human nature to feel like um, we want to do something even if it's you know making a cookie or something yeah well, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure if it is human nature. I mean, it's it's human nature for, you know, secular people and people who don't believe in God. But then you have those people who are just going to fucking pray about it and pray, yeah. like, hope hope really hard that, that people feel better and that stuff like this doesn't happen again and just sit on their asses and not actually do anything about it. Yep. Yeah, the governor <laughs> was like, hey, uh, Rick Scott was like, just just pray for him because that'll, that'll do so much That's good. so helpful. But we, d- we did have a question for you. Yeah. And the Hickory Humanist Alliance is being asked to say a few words um, tonight at a service that's being held locally. And we wanted uh, your input and, you know, humanist perspective on and as LGBT allies, the things that we should include. I think the the best and most important thing that can be said is a call to action to other allies. Absolutely. Um, because I, I think one of the most important things, uh, one of the most important messages that a community can get is that there are people who care. And we're not expecting you to wait for some far off date that it's going to get better in the future. We need to know that there are people in the fight actively working to make it better right now. Yeah. And I think speaking very plainly about what our motivations are, right? We're secular humanists. We're atheists. This is not about God. This is about people. And, and, and saying, you know, we as allies are committing to do what we can, and we are calling on other allies to do the same because this is important. Um, so I think that's, I, I think, uh, you know, message on the, along those lines, I think is probably the most powerful thing that I think could be said. I took notes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. And I think particularly in the, this area of the country, um, there we're surrounded by religious messages. And if we can be there, particularly and, in our LGBT community right. here, and it's, it's nice to, uh, have been invited to, to be included in in the message of support here yeah that's amazing i mean that's you know it, it goes back to the reason that i got my start in activism in the first place was because there was a really disgustingly overt tone deaf religious message at a vigil where someone had died uh, and religion played a big part and i just i know there's going to be tons of that moving forward and yeah. you know i, I don't you know, for for the people who that's meaningful for i don't you know, I don't necessarily want to take that away from them, but there needs to be a space for people like us as well. Um, and that's, yeah. you know, uh, another reason why I wanted to do this show, because if nothing else, if, if it's all over these local vigils and all of that kind of stuff, they can at least come here and know that, uh, you know, you're not going to get, you're not going to get God thrown in your face here. And that, yeah. uh, you know, we care about you because, because you're people, because, because you exist, you know, we care about you. So yeah, I think yeah. that's an, I think that's an important message to send. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to call in, and we're here. So if you want to point allies in the right direction, we're always here and available for you. I cannot tell you what that means to me. Thank you guys a lot. Thank Thank you, you, Kelly, for everything that you do. We love you guys. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I'm just, like, overwhelmed by the amount of support from people that aren't necessarily part of the queer community themselves, just even within this call. I'm just, I'm just so touched by this. Well, and, and I think that's, that's the thing that we look for, right? Because I, I, I think it's really, uh, it misses the point a lot to say that there's a greater purpose to all of this, but I think, God has a plan. yeah, but I think, I, I think what it's getting at at its core is true and that um we can we can try and pull what little bits of good we can from terrible situations right we can we can become closer as a community 
uh, you know, we can we can learn just exactly how much our allies care about us and our well being. Um, I've had so many people reach out to me uh, for, for no other reason than just to say, "Hey, how you doing? You doing okay? You need to talk," and that means so much to know that we're being thought about and, that, and to know that we're being cared for. It it really does mean the world. Um, so. Phone lines are still open. If anybody else wants to call in, it's 513-878-0429. Uh, we, we definitely want to keep hearing from folks as long as folks are comfortable, uh, as long as folks are comfortable uh, calling in. So, Ari, what do we, what do we do from here? We got about, Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Why are you asking me? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so here's, here's the thing, right? Because we feel in the wake of these things, we feel helpless. Right. Because these things seem so much bigger than we are. Uh, you know, the, the, the hate against us, it seems so much bigger and so much more powerful than we are. And, you know, I've always been a proponent of, of the word of the, the idea that, you know, love is stronger than hate. Uh, but you know, damn if it doesn't sometimes feel like it's not really that way. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, there, there are, three main tacks you can go down. There's the political route, the social route, and the individual route. So the political route, obviously, it is a huge problem that this person was able to stockpile so much ammunition and get such easy access to weapons. I know this is a big, you know, hot button issue, but every time there's a shooting like this, it's just more more and more solidifies to me, and I think to a lot of people, that we need gun control reform desperately because, you know, you know, people are arguing, like, oh, it's, you know, if there's a crazy person, uh, he's going to be able to get guns and, you know, get ammunition and whatever else he needs to, to shoot up a place. But regulation definitely makes it harder. That's for sure. Well, and that's the thing, right? Because there is no one, there is no one who says like, cool, we're going to do gun reform and it's going to solve literally every gun problem ever. <laughs> right. I don't think anyone is saying that. You know, and, and that's exactly what it is. So whenever, whenever there's a law that gets, you know, ratcheted down a little bit and one thing happens, everybody's like, oh, the law is completely useless. And that's, it's such an absolutist way of thinking and completely and utterly misses the point, right? I don't think anyone is silly enough to think that, you know, if we, you know, enact new gun regulations and make guns harder to get, that it's going to prevent every shooting. But we can prevent some. We can do something. Yeah. We can do something other than exercising the 24 hour news cycle for a week every time this happens or for an hour every time this happens because it, because it's become so mundane at this point, right? The fact is we haven't done a fucking thing about gun violence in this country. Literally not a fucking thing. And at this point, I'm, I'm ready to, to have the debate about what can be done. But if we're seriously still arguing over whether or not we should do something, I, yeah. Yeah, it just, I can't even, I can't even, I'm like a white girl, I can't even. <laughs> yeah, well, and, uh, and William in chat makes a good point. We are the only developed country with this kind of stuff happening regularly. Um, and there's, you know, there's that onion article that gets yeah. circulated every single time something like this happens is no way to prevent this tragedy says only country where this sort of thing regularly happens. Yep. And God, that's what satire looks like because it's <laughs> biting and it's perfect. It's true. Um, so yeah, so you were talking about political, you said there were, there were yeah. two other, two so, other tracks we can go down. So, so. On, on the political track, if, if you believe in gun control and gun reform and regulations please 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 contact your representatives write letters you know go out into the streets and scream whatever you need to do i mean vote vote for candidates who who are you know in favor of of gun control and gun regulation you know political corruption is a whole other issue which i won't get into at the moment that makes me a little less hopeful for that but you know do it do what you can in that issue and then um you know socially Call out religious fundamentalism, please, please do it. I mean, we 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 talked to earlier to Alex Moreski, who's a liberal Christian who obviously decries all this sorts of thing, and 
there are lots of moderate and liberal Christians and Muslims and Jews and all kinds of people, even though it says in their in their holy book that, you know, violence is sometimes sanctioned by God, they don't necessarily believe that. And I am fine with that. I have other issues with, you know, the intellectual foundations of their beliefs. But, you know, I'm I'm still allies with them. If they're against violence with me, then then I'm cool with that. But we all need to, you know, start really clamping down on people with these sorts of beliefs because we don't know for sure what happened, but there are reports that this guy called 911 and pledged allegiance to ISIS. We don't know whether he was actually affiliated with them in any way or not, but he certainly seemed to espouse a lot of their beliefs. Um, I'm... <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how to do this, man. How do we do it? Yeah, it's uh, it's a big problem. <laughs> um, we uh, we've got another caller on the line. Caller, who are we talking to? Hey, this is Chris Maley. Hey, how are you? Hi. <laughs> so, what's on your mind? Uh, I just wanted to talk about the donating blood part. They need uh, O positive and O negative, and. Turns out I'm O positive, but I can't donate. <laughs> is that so. something that uh, if people, only people in the area, like people in the Orlando area, if they give blood, their blood will be used for that? Or is it like a nationwide kind of thing? Well, I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Georgia and Florida share a blood supply. Mm. Um, I have no we, idea. We had the, we had, uh, they, cha- they recently changed their name, but it used to be the Florida Georgia Blood Alliance. Um, first thing, first thing I did, uh, you know, I'm broke as hell, but, uh, I was watching CNN and they're like, they need O positive and O negative. I'm like, Oh, I'm O positive. I can help. You know? And then I, I, I texted my mom. She's a nurse. And, and uh, yeah, she's like, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah, I've, I've had to have my entire like blood volume replaced like within the last 12 months. Yeah, yeah. So I'm. I don't know. It's it's frustrating. I, you know, I'm sitting here fucking like hopping mad. I I, I want to do something. You know. Well, yeah, I hear you, and and that's and that's what like. Do we just sit here and stew and be angry? <laughs> like because yeah. that's like that's that's what we've got at this point. You know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I might record later, but. I, other than that, you know, I'm just I'm I'm sitting here watching the news and 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 the thing that gets me okay, this guy saw two people kiss two two well really two people kissing and he got he got mad. What the hell is it? That's yeah. not a normal response. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> for some people it is, I guess you know what I mean, and that's and that's I, I think that's what's so what's so poignant about this is I think, uh, you know, we, we, we kind of get the wrong idea about where, you know, where we're at as a country socially on, you know, gay and trans issues. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. I mean, there's been so much good stuff and so much visibility and so much good press. You know what I mean? It's, I think it's really easy to kind of get the wrong idea about where we're at and, and forget yeah. that there really are so many people who, I mean, who really do have this sort of, sort of vitriolic hatred towards, yeah. towards the queer and trans community. I want to read a, a comment in the chat room. This is from Kathy. I'm not sure if she's okay with me saying her last name, so I'll just say Kathy. Um, she says, I can see this turning into an anti-Muslim issue in the coming campaigns. The gun issue is too profitable. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh. Kathy. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I saw a lot of people saying the same thing online, that this is going to drum up support for Donald Trump even more because people are going to, you know, go to the fact that this guy's a Muslim and say, you know, this this is why we need a strong leader to, to you know, stamp out all the Muslim radicals and bomb ISIS and that kind of thing. And obviously, I'm also against religious fundamentalism, but, you know, taking it out on everyday Muslims is not going to help us. It's going to hurt us. I'm a, uh, well, I'm actually a gun owner. And I can never, I can't see the need to have an assault rifle. I've, I've never had that desire to even own one, you know? No, I hear you. And that's, and, and the thing is, you know, I, 
I've always thought like you know if they weren't so expensive, I'd probably own a gun. Um, just because I, I I literally I legitimately enjoy like target practice and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, like that stuff's yeah. fun to me, you know. And then and then of course you know obviously there's the self defense as- aspect. But I also am not a person who generally goes through the day thinking that that's a thing that I need. Yeah. You, know, you know, as far as self defense goes, you know, and like and now I'm I'm legitimately rethinking that, you know, like I've always kind of got my head on a swivel when I'm in public because you know violence against trans people is a common thing, but it'd be a stretch to say that I'm always, you know, anxious or anything like that, but it's yeah. something that's always definitely in the back of my mind. And I feel like now it's something that I have to think even more about. Yeah. Uh, I hear you. I, I really do. Yeah. Well, uh, Chris, thanks for calling in buddy. We love you. Yeah. 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 I love you guys. Take Bye. care. You too. So, this brings up a good point. Um, we've only got a couple of minutes left, and I think this is a good uh, a good thing to kind of start to to close the episode here. Um, so here's what we don't do in response: we don't respond with violence against Muslims. Absolutely, or That's, anyone. Well, or anyone, <laughs> <laughs> but you know specifically, they're Muslims or people who are perceived to be muslim because they're uh, because they're darker skinned or because they're wearing a certain type of clothing that someone might stereotypically associate with that um the answer is to not to respond to those people with violence because religious fundamentalism is a problem right we have to fight religious fundamentalism if we want to solve these problems but we also can acknowledge that the everyday muslim the everyday christian abhors this violence as much as we do and that perpetrating acts of violence against them is not the answer to the problem. We don't answer. That, that'll just make them even more antagonistic against us. Well, right, exactly. And the thing is, I think most people, regardless of your religious beliefs, regardless of your, you know, socio political beliefs, like at the end of the day, we're all just trying to live life. Most of us, right? Most of us are not really interested in, in a whole lot about what other people do with their lives. Uh, you know, we're worried about taking care of our families. We're worried about paying our bills. We're worried about, you know, putting food on the table and, you know, having a good time and creating good memories with our families. That's what most people are concerned with. And in, in the, in the course of fighting this fundamentalism and this hatred, the answer is to not take that away from other people. It's just it, violence in, in self-defense is obviously a thing, right? But violence in response to these things, it's just not the answer. So what, what, what I want to encourage people to do is reach out. So I want to talk for a second to the allies listening here. Um, hey, friend. Yeah. So, hi. Um <laughs> But in all seriousness, uh, I don't know that I can overstate the importance of your involvement in these conversations. Uh, The simple fact is, as a trans person, a person who is not trans speaking up on my behalf is going to mean a lot more to some people than anything I say. Absolutely. So your voice is vital. And I think there is a sentiment that's that's very well-meaning among people that they shouldn't speak out on these things because they're afraid that they're speaking in our place or that they're taking our voice from us. And I want you to know there, there is a point where that happens maybe, but I think you will do far better by speaking out as long as it's coming from a place that's educated and a place that's informed by the community that you're trying to be an ally to always speak out. If you're, if you're comfortable and you feel safe doing so be visible as the opposition. The next time you hear somebody at work, call somebody a faggot or call somebody a tranny, speak up, say something, tell them that's not funny. Tell them that's not okay. You may not necessarily change someone's mind, but you're going to plant the seed that this society is not going to be okay with these things moving forward. And there may be someone around you that you know, that, that you make, you made them feel a little bit safer because they know that there's someone on their side and they were, they were afraid to say something because they were scared. Exactly. You never know who's listening, whether it's a person who's still in the closet 
or a person who may also want to be an ally but not feel comfortable speaking up, every single time someone speaks up, it makes it easier for others to speak up. And those of us who are in less vulnerable positions and can do so more safely, if we do this, we make it easier for the next person who's not as privileged as we are, who doesn't have the platform that we have. It makes it easier for them to be visible, for them to stick out, and for them to, to live in this world and navigate this world as a regular human being, because at the end of the day, that's what we're all trying to do. Um, Jeremiah published a, an article on the No Religion Required blog just yesterday about allyship, and I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it's called something along the lines of allies as students and hype men. And it's about walking the line between, um, you know, being an ally who's like speaking on behalf of people and being on, an ally who is there supporting people and helping support people's messages, um, which is what Kelly yeah, was just talking it's about. It's a fantastic article and it's uh, a link to it is going to be in the description box of the show. So definitely please check that article out. Um, and also check out Ari's article on our on our new Patheos blog about five things that allies say that kind of miss the point because it's also a fantastic article. Um, <laughs> it is. You're a really good writer. Um, and then next I want to speak directly to those members of our queer and trans community who are hurting right now because I feel like I feel like that's all of us, right? Um it's said all the time, but I don't think it can be said enough. At the very least, no matter what you're going through, you're not going through it alone. You you definitely have a community that you can share these things with and that you can reach out to, even if it's not people in your local community, if you don't have a, sp a spouse or close friends or anything like that, that you can reach out to in real life. You have us. Uh, the Gatheist Manifesto at gmail.com is the email address. I spend lots of time answering email. Please reach out if you need someone to talk to. Uh, we are here. Uh, you know, there, there, there are places that you can call. Um, trigger warning on this one. Um, I know that there are people who are contemplating suicide who might be pushed a little bit further in that direction in the wake of an event like this because the world becomes that much less of an appealing place to stay involved with. Um, and I want to say that, that I, I honor and I respect the place that those feelings come from, but we need you here because you're precious. So if, if that's something that you're struggling with, please reach out to somebody. Um, the Trevor lifeline is a place that youth can go. Uh, if you're LGBT, that's one 866 488 Seven three eight six. It's free, confidential, and available twenty four seven. Again, the Trevor Lifeline is one eight six six four eight eight seven three eight six. If you are trans and you're struggling, it's eight seven seven five six five eight eight six zero. That's Trans Lifeline. That's a, a, a suicide hotline staffed exclusively by trans people for trans people. And if you're in Canada, it's 877-330-6366. And for anyone else who's struggling, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-273-8255. Reach out to your communities. Find support groups. Find friends. Find people online. Reach out to us. Whatever you're struggling with, you do not have to struggle with it alone. There are people here who care about you, and we want you to be okay. And if you're not okay, that's, that's fine. You're allowed to feel however you feel. Your feelings are valid. We honor and respect that. But we want to love you, and we want to give you support. Ari, do you have anything else before we close out here? Um, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone who called in and everyone who is here with us in the chat room. Um, it just really... I, you know, I'm not anyone who's personally affected by this, and I can't imagine what it's like for the families and the surviving victims. Um, but it does mean a lot to me, and I'm sure to Callie and to our listeners to hear so many people, you know, uh, asking how they can help and expressing their love and support for our community. So thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely second that. I mean, both just as a person and as an activist, it, it's. It, uh, it means a lot to see the level of support that we're getting and how many people actually do care and who have reached out. So um, definitely want to second that and say thank you to everybody. That, my friends, 
is going to do it for this special live broadcast of the Gatheist Manifesto on Secular Media Network. Uh, again, I want to thank everyone who called in for sharing your stories, sharing your opinions, sharing your time. We really, really do appreciate it. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Gatheist Manifesto. You can email us at the Gatheist Manifesto at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter at Gatheist Callie. And Ari, how can people find you? I am on Facebook, Ari Stillman, and my email is AriStillman4 at gmail.com. Before we go, I want you to know that if you're lost, you're hurting, you're scared, if you feel like no one cares and no one understands, you need to know there's a community out here that loves you, cares for you, knows that you're capable of amazing things, and that you are worthy of love. If you're struggling, please don't be afraid to reach out. Until next time, friends, this is the Gatheist Manifesto. Manifesto.